For most Australians, selling their home is the best opportunity they'll have to make a tax-free capital gain and really build their wealth. If you are here to bid today, you are required to be registered. Maybe get a bid or offer to get us up and running here this morning. But why is it that similar houses in the same area can sell for vastly different prices and some people make more money than others? Let's find out. My name's Tom Panos and I've spent the last 30 years helping people sell their homes for the highest price they can. I've found the vendors that do the best are the ones who understand the process and can approach their sales and marketing with confidence. This confidence comes with experience, but if you're like most Australians who only ever sell two or three houses, then keep watching because successful vendors, along with independent experts in research, Interior design and marketing will all help you sell your home for going, what it's worth. Going, going, oh, so I'm really happy with that result because um, when I got to the property, the real estate agent said to me that they're really close friends of his and they really wanted to get a good result and, um, and he got one. They would have been over the moon if they just, you know, got to 700, but getting over 700, um, they're really happy. It's the market being quite strong, or reportedly quite strong, with the yeah, clearance rates are quite high, then, yeah, it's, yeah, auctioning was, was the best strategy, I think, and, yeah, it worked well for us. Whoever bought it, and I didn't get to meet the buyers, are going to be pretty happy because it's one of the suburbs in the marketplace that seems to have outperformed. But I used to live in Balmain when I first rented here, and I lived uh, on Birchgrove Road, so... You know, I've always loved Balmain. It's a beautiful area, close to the city. It's got everything you could, you could wish for, really. Um, so, yeah, I'm very, very happy to, to get it, really. Essentially, people buy with their hearts and confirm their decisions with their brains. So with that in mind, you've always got to say, how do I get people excited about this property? How do I get people to really feel connected and really feel at home with this property? The home I'm about to auction is an inner city warehouse conversion that's owned by Peter Cornish, a retired headmaster. He's done everything right. Researched the market to establish his price, chosen a good agent, presented the property well and advertised it to a broad range of potential buyers using newspapers, magazines, online and signage. Let's see how he does. The house itself, um, three bedrooms. Um, very good facilities, one car parking space, um, well looked after uh, and of course from our point of view we bought it as a family home. So that's where we've come from with it. We found it by accident, we were looking at other properties and just saw the sign came along and we bought the property. We, we advertised it, um, we agreed a campaign with the real estate agent who is dealing with it uh, uh, for us and said please sign off if you agree with this. Um, trying to make sure that people on, if I can put it this way, on the outer edges also know that there's a property, property they could move into in the CBD. Mm -hmm. Secondly, to make sure that I was confident that we had actually done the most we could to make sure people knew to come through and have a look at it, absolutely. So yes, it was advertised very widely. I'm often asked by people in the workplace or in social environments, what's the best way to buy an auction? What's the strategy? Should you go in and put in a really hard bid right at the start? Or should you hold off till you hear um, the auctioneer suggest that the property's gonna sell? And most importantly, buyers, it is that unique structure of this property, true warehouse living, it's got everything going for it, and yeah. the airport not too far away. Bid with confidence, buyers. Bid with confidence. Yeah. And after years and years of auction, I still don't think that there's one clear strategy that's going to win. There are so many what? variables. You don't know what uh, levels the other bidders are at. Going. But I do think what? it helps to be a positive bidder, to create the perception to your competitive bidders that you're going to buy this property regardless. At a million to 91, third final call, you all done, you all silent, going, 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 go! So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great day.
great weekend. It was something like 100,000 above reserve. This property sold for a million and ninety thousand dollars, which was one hundred and forty-one thousand above the reserve price. To get this result, the vendor invested eight thousand dollars in marketing and six thousand dollars in styling and furniture hire. Put another way, Peter Cornish put fourteen thousand dollars in and got a hundred and forty-one thousand dollars out. Without styling it and without the preparation of it, we wouldn't have achieved that um, that result. So yes, it's gone very well from beginning to end. In fact as at today. There's a belief that the best agents use a formula that goes. A world record price equals world-class marketing plus world-class negotiation plus emotional connection and competitive bidding. Hi, Gil. One man who used this formula to build up and sell a very successful real estate business is Gil Davies. He's recently applied robust statistical science to the question of where and how people should advertise to get the best price for the property they're selling. So Gil, why do we advertise and how do we go about it? Basically, we use the statistical technique used, known as reversionary analysis, which allows one to isolate back to the one factor that we're looking for. In this case, what is the effect of advertising on the final selling price? It sounds pretty technical. At the end of the day, Gil, what did the research clearly show and demonstrate? The bottom line is that a combination of advertising in print and on the internet definitely gets the highest what? price. To put a monetary value on it, if you spend about $4,000 advertising the average property, you're going to get about $10,000 back. And that roughly 1% increase across the board applies in 99% of the cases. So it's without doubt that that combination of advertising works better than either single medium. I found that most people don't understand how, how advertising works. Um, they, they work on the basis of what they've heard from somebody else or their, or their own experience. But as an agent selling properties, you rapidly learn what does and doesn't work. I think the most important thing is that, of course, there are any number of buyers out there who might be interested in a property, but they are only going to be attracted in specific ways. A couple of buyers might come from the internet. A couple of buyers might come from local advertising and newspapers. Another one might come from a signboard. Someone else might be referred to the property by somebody who knows it. Now, if you cut out any of those people. If you decided not to use the internet, for instance, then instead of having six potential bars for the property, you'd only have four. If you decided not to use the newspapers in your advertising, that might cut out another three buyers. So it becomes not only progressively more difficult to get the right price for it, but it becomes difficult even to sell the property at all. And my analogy to this would be fishing in a sea or fishing in a puddle. When you first start the marketing, the property is new to the market. It's exciting. If people are looking for a property like that, they'll come and they'll have a look at it. If you don't get those people to come then, or if you lose them, or if the marketing campaign drags on, it becomes progressively more and more difficult to attract people to the property at all. So instead of fishing in that sea, you're now fishing in a puddle. So what would you say to the vendor out there who wants to save a dollar and say, I'm just going to put it on the internet for a few weeks and see how it goes? You would be much better off doing all of the advertising all at once and just doing it for a short period of time because you will attract all of those buyers, you'll see who's out there, you'll get the competition, you'll get the better price and you'll actually save in not having to do drip feed advertising for weeks or months down the track. By adopting these methods, I had all properties sold in less than a month and my average was, was just slightly over two weeks. So I can say hand on heart that I was saving my vendors money as well as getting them more dollars for their properties. There are hundreds of thousands of properties sitting on real estate web portals, but when a buyer sees a property advertised in print, they know the vendor isn't just testing the market, but is truly committed to selling. In other words, a serious vendor attracts a serious buyer. Tim Lawless is a research director for RP Data. What they do is analyse real estate statistical information. They look at prices, they look at clearance rates, they also look at how many days on market it takes to sell a property. 
and they essentially have every transaction across Australia and they manipulate that data and find out answers to questions that people like to know about real estate such as you know what is the clearance rate at that time or what the median price is in a suburb. I caught up with Tim to ask him how vendors should set their selling price and about the unique love affair Australians have with property. How are you? Well, how are you? Very well. It's good to see you. Now, with all this information and knowledge that you've got about property, you must see trends. Do Australians have a love affair with real estate? Well, a really good statistic is the fact that Australians have about 60% of their wealth tied up in property, right. much more so than you'll find in other comparable countries like the US or the UK, or even New Zealand for that matter. So investment in property in Australia is a very popular way to, I suppose, uh, um, build up your investment portfolio, much more so than, than say, the share market, for example. Right. For the simple reason being that it's, it's fairly straightforward. You don't have to be a, a rocket scientist to invest in property. It's all about location and it's all about timing as well, making sure you're buying and selling at appropriate times. Normally, when people actually buy and sell a property, they're holding on to that, that particular home for at least seven years. Right. So you're finding it is a very long-term investment as opposed to the share market when you're generally buying and selling in, in fairly short time frames. Thank you. Someone thinking of selling a property would have to set a price on what's realistic in the marketplace. How does a seller set their asking price? Realistic is probably the, the key word there. Setting a realistic price or a reasonable price is one of the most important aspects of selling a property. Now the best way to set a reasonable price or a realistic price is to work with a reputable real estate agent. Now most real estate agents are going to have access to RP data and they can look at what's sold in the area um, over time so you can find comparable sales. In addition to that, they should also be looking at what's currently on the marketplace. Because what's available for sale is what, I suppose, um, prospective buyers will be comparing your property to. So having a look at what's for sale in the marketplace and what has recently sold are the best ways to set your, uh, set your uh, selling price. So Buster, should you allocate some sort of money towards marketing? The general rule of thumb is that you should allow about 1% of your expected sale price for your overall marketing budget. This is your one opportunity to, to sell an asset, you know, your, your principal place of residence, you don't get any capital gains on it, and the higher price you can get for the home through a decent marketing campaign, choosing a reputable agent, and actually making sure you're, you're uh, getting the best possible price for your home is going to maximize your sale dollar. So the first steps in getting the best price for your home is to research your area. Select the best agent and work with them to set your price. Now you'll have to prepare your home for sale and then commence a marketing campaign. We're going to meet Karen McCartney now. Karen's been working with design and style for over 20 years, both in the UK and here in Australia. She's written about architecture and is currently the editorial director of leading Australian homemaker magazine, Inside Out. What's the first thing you should do when you're getting your home ready for sale? I think the very first thing that you should do when you're getting your home ready for sale is to disassociate yourself from, from your home because it's been such a personal place for you and your family for so long. But really, in selling it, you're turning it into a marketable commodity. So you've got to start by thinking about it differently. What about street appeal? Street appeal is really crucial because as people drive up to a house, they need to imagine themselves in there. I mean, buying a house is an enormous investment, but more than anything, it is a lifestyle choice. So you want that person to feel, this is me, I want to live here, I want to be here. And so to that end, you've got to be really careful about colour choices on the facade. You don't want something that looks dated, so it may well be worth repainting in contemporary colours. With Karen is Margie Attard, who is a property stylist from Coco Republic. And we've come to a block of units where one has been styled and one hasn't. Where would you begin with an apartment like this? Well, I think this is a great example of why to style a property. As you can see, it's very cold, very uninviting, and most people just wouldn't know where to put their furniture. So this is a, a fantastic example of the kind of thing you do at Coco Republic? It most certainly is. Coco Republic offer a complete styling service. 
or a partial styling service, which is called an integration. A complete styling service is what we've done here and what you can see, where this property was completely empty and we brought in absolutely everything. All the furniture, the accessories, the artwork, bed linen, beds, kitchen product and bathroom product. It looks, it looks lovely and it's got that very nice um, tonal but textured palette. Is that something you consciously sought That's to achieve? That's very important. We do tend to keep our schemes fairly neutral, so it does appeal to every, everyone. And this is um, lovely and low, um, so it does very much draw the view into the room. Is that an in intentional? Yeah, that's actually a really important part. Um, we do tend to keep furniture low in a situation like this because obviously we've got this great view that we don't want to block. It also feels um, quite roomy. Is that something that people who aren't having a styling service should think about when preparing their own home for sale? Definitely. It's now a uh, a question of putting it on the market. We're going to have lots of people coming through. Put away all your personal effects. Declutter, which is a huge thing. People don't want to see all the photos that you've collected over 20 years. It's very important that people are able to move around an apartment or a home and not feel like it's restricted. If they're doing it themselves, I think keep the palette neutral. And if you're going to add in colour, you know, do that with your accessories and your throws. We've now met industry experts and spoken with vendors who've achieved great prices. From this, we've learnt there are seven steps to a successful sale. Be positive, proactive and embrace this rare opportunity to make tax-free money. Find out what homes in your area are selling for, select a good agent and work exclusively in collaboration with them. Set your price and agree on a sales strategy. Make sure your home looks great and consider getting help from a stylist. Allocate a budget of around 1% of your expected price for marketing. Advertise your property in a broad range of media including newspapers and the internet. Remember selling your home is a great opportunity to make a tax free capital gain. My advice is to embrace the opportunity and make sure you sell it for what it's worth.